Hello everybody, welcome back to the ASUS ROG YouTube channel and we got something pretty cool for you this time around. We're going to be doing an overview and unboxing for a brand new Sabertooth X79 series motherboard. So first and foremost, let's talk a little bit actually about this specific board and what defines it in terms of our product portfolio or our product stack. The Sabertooth board is really focused at users that are looking for a high degree of stability, durability, ultra high component quality choices, as well as long term reliability in the platform. Now, there's also some specialized features that we introduced to really focus at users that are looking at advanced monitoring and cooling configurations. So this is kind of what sets the Sabertooth series of boards apart from our channel series, our WS series, or our ROG series of motherboards. Now that being said, while this series is focused at, let's say, somebody that's just looking at really good quality stock operation, maybe professional usage, Soho, SMB, this still makes a great standard do-it-yourself board, or for somebody that's interested in building a high-end gaming system, it'll also get that job done. And even for guys that are looking to overclock on the platform, especially with the advanced thermal armor control configuration that we have on here and the cooling abilities, it's also going to be able to do that very well. But uh, let's go ahead and actually jump into, actually take a look at the box, see some of the unique attributes. And as we get into that, we'll also go ahead and actually go through the unboxing process as well. So one of the first and foremost features that we actually see here is going to be the actual five-year warranty. As part of the actual validation process with tough boards, where we go in and we actually validate the components such as the capacitors, the chokes, and other components actually on the board, it goes through an extensive server grade validation process. All of this goes ahead and allows us to offer a five-year warranty on our board because of the higher quality as well as the validation that we're offering on the Sabertooth series of product. Now, if we go ahead and open up this flap here, we can take a look and see actually a number of the new features that we're introducing actually on this series of board. So first and foremost, we have something that we actually have had previously in our P67 or 1155 boards, and that's the thermal armor. The thermal armor has gone ahead and got a little bit of a different layout configuration this time around due to the actual spacing requirements of the X79 chipset, but it's still definitely going to be offered advanced cooling for the actual VRM as well as the actual PCH. We still offer our thermal radar technology, which is our onboard 12 sensors that actually are dynamically mapping and actually reading temperatures real time on the motherboard and can dynamically work with our actual hardware super IO controller as well as within our AI Suite 2 operating system to automatically tune and configure your fans so that you get optimal cooling. We have our brand new digital power control which goes up from just being the previously implemented Digi Plus VRM where we had extensive control and digital power delivery for the CPU and the VRM implementation to now also offering digital power control and delivery for the actual DRAM. Now this is one of the key hallmarks of tough boards, which is going to be the tough components. And really with tough uh, components, the big focus for us is going to be one, the tough capacitor, then we have the tough choke, and then we have the tough MOSFET. These are all components that have gone through a much higher level of qualification outside of our own internal ASUS qualification to meet mil-spec grade validation. So that we're go ahead and letting you know as users that you're getting the best quality components that we can put out here. And that ultimately comes down to a part that's gonna be able to have higher operating tolerance, be able to be pushed further, or be able to be put in more stressful environments to ensure the long-term reliability of the board. Here we have something new that we're introducing. Now, as you may or may not know, on the X79 chipset, there is no SSD caching. So ASUS has gone ahead and integrated a custom hardware and software solution on the board to go ahead and offer uh, SSD caching, and the Sabertooth board does have that. We have our customized and exclusive USB 3 boost technology, which is once again a combination of hardware in the USB 3 controller, firmware, and also in the driver. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we actually get to the unboxing portion. And then lastly, we have our USB BIOS flashback, which is an easy mechanism on a hardware level to be able to update the actual UBFI without even having a CPU, memory, or graphics card installed. So that's just some of the initial items in here. Let's go ahead and crack this guy open, take a look actually at the board, and from there, take a look at some of the other uh, items that come along with the unit. So we go ahead and take this guy out here. We'll go ahead and rest it here and from here we'll go ahead and also just start taking a look at the actual items that come included with the actual saber tooth so we'll move this here to the side and take a look and see what it comes inside the box so right off the bat here we have 
three Sur Laitier cables, excuse me, three packs of uh, Sur Laitier cables. So two cables, a piece in each package. So we have four SATA 6G cables, and then we have two additional SATA 3G cables. In terms of the actual PCH connectivity, there's going to be two SATA 6G uh, controllers. So we have the two from the PCH, and then we have another two from the actual SSD caching implementation. So we're giving you four in terms of being able to actively connect all of those. Okay. We have the actual thermal armor fan, which is an actual fan that can be optionally mounted here in terms of the actual thermal armor interface. So we'll go ahead and set that side to stop there. We have uh, SLI bridge. We have our Q connector, so the Q connector for the actual power leads, and then we have a secondary Q connector for the USB leads. We have our custom IO shield, or as like we like to refer to it as our Q shield. Our Q shield actually also uh, comes with actually a padding on the back which serves two purposes. One, it's softer for installation, but this also helps to actively block EMI from actually coming into the board, which can impact stability as well as cause other variables during overclocking. Then we have, of course, the manual. We have a support disk. And then we have an installation guide for the actual CPU socket. This is very important. The socket being entirely new to the platform, it's a little bit different in terms of installation, so make sure to look at this information before installing the CPU. And then lastly, we have our certificate of reliability, which actually goes through and denotes the actual mill specification standard tests that are run by the independent facility for the capacitors, the chokes, and the actual MOSFETs. And if you're interested in finding more actually about the validation process and these actual tests, you can definitely go to our support site at support.asus.com to take a look at those and actually download those. So now that we've taken a look at what comes inside here, let's go ahead and actually jump over to the board itself. So right off the bat here, here we have our actual Sabertooth X79. Beautiful board. I really like the actual uh, color scheme that this board has. I think it's really aggressive, looks really cool. But let's go ahead and actually start taking a look at actually at the specific uh, layout features that we have here on the board. So from a very high level, we're gonna go ahead and actually take a look at the actual connectivity. So first and foremost, one of the new features that we have on our X-79 series of boards is actually fan connectivity. If we take a look and, and see actually what fan connectors we have, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six four pin PWM fan headers. And one of the really great things that we offer on our X79 series of boards is that we're using a new custom Super IO controller. The Super IO controller is actually the hardware monitor as well as the controller for the fan functionality. With this new controller, we're actually offering five fan controls to be fully manually modified. So that means outside of our standard presets that we offer, such as, let's say, silent or standard or disabled, you can actually manually modify the actual fan profiles so that you can hit specific target temperatures on either the high end or the low end and then modify the actual fan rotation accordingly. And this allows you to really have the most flexibility. As you can see in this chassis that we have behind us, this is key at being able to have these well-placed fan controls uh, and headers. Because as you can actually see here, we have one 120 millimeter fan, another 120 millimeter fan, another 120 millimeter fan for actually our H60, and then 220 millimeter fans here in the front of the chassis. So ideally, we'd love to actually be able to control all of that and ensure that the board is actually being able to be well-cooled and have an overall well-ventilated and, and cool operating system. So with this level of fan control that we offer on our X79 boards, it's really cool that you're able to do that. Now, moving over, one of the other key items that we can see first and foremost is BAM, is the eight DIM configuration. Eight DIMMs is really what we feel is the right focus in terms of the design implementation for X79 as it allows you to have the most flexibility at DRAM density. So what we talk about when we're talking about DRAM density and having the most flexibility for it, right now you can buy 16 gigabytes for approximately about $100. So that's generally going to be DDR3-1600. So ideally in this type of configuration it's going to allow you to easily and effectively upgrade to up to let's say 32 or even 64 gigabytes. Uh, for 32 though, you can easily buy two 16 gigabyte kits and only have it cost you approximately about $200. Um, with a 4DIM solution, you're, only, you're going to be looking at still potentially up to 32 gigabytes, but it's going to be a significantly more expensive upgrade path due to the higher densities that are going to be required. So, in terms of the overall so overclocking potential, uh, we've also done internal qualification that as long as the 
memory controller on your CPU is robust enough and solid enough, you can definitely get to high enough speeds in terms of being able to, even on an 8 in configuration, be able to hold 1600, 1866, or even 2133 speeds, if not even higher, once again, depending on the integrated memory controller on your CPU. So moving over, let's go ahead and start taking a look at actually some of the PCIe connectivity. So we can see here on this board, we have the optimal layout in terms of that we have dual slot spacing, so that if you're running two GPUs that were two, uh, two slot cards, that would go ahead and occupy this top lane and this top lane, still leaving you spacing in the center, as, still, as well as an open slot for possibly a higher end sound card, dedicated RAID controller, um, wireless network card, any number of different devices that you could go ahead and install. If you were doing two triple slot cards, you'd still have a great layout configuration because you could go two triple slot cards without any overhang, which would be an ideal configuration. So once again, when we recap here, we've got a full physical by 16. We got a physical by one, physical by one, physical by 16, a legacy PCI slot, and then another physical by 16. In terms of your operation under the X79, this would operate at true by 16 electrically and by 16 electrically, while this one would offer by eight operation, even though it's only a 16 slot. Now, moving over to some of the other elements that we have on the board, let's take a look at some of the rest of the onboard connectivity. So we, here we can see we have a front USB 3 connector on the board, so that allows you to have easy connection for chassis that now have this uh, connection available to them. We have eight serial ATA ports that are all right angle, so that's great, especially when you consider that when you have your longer graphics cards, it's not going to be an obstruction, and it can allow for easy cable routing once you get inside your chassis. So to recap here, we've got the six SATA ports that are offered natively by the PCH, two SATA 6G, and then four SATA 3G, and then we have our ASUS SSD caching, which are SATA 6G. Looking at the bottom of the board, we have our front audio connector, we have a COM port connection, and then we have four USB 3, excuse me, four USB 2 headers, uh, for your optional headers inside of your chassis, for card readers, or for different types of devices that might require an actual onboard uh, header for USB 2. Now, one note that we do want to make is that with Sabertooth, we also do take extra time in terms of putting on additional implementations that help to improve the overall reliability of the actual board. And one of these key items is actually going to be advanced ESD-based protection. So we actually put ESD-based circuits over each one of these USB 2 ports. And this is critical because with some USB 2 devices, as you go ahead and plug them in to the actual, let's say, front header ports, they could potentially pass over maybe a spike or a surge that could affect the reliability of the operation of the board. Um, but for us, we make sure to put on these additional mechanisms to help safeguard and ensure normal operation. So moving over to the top end of the board, we're taking a look at something a little bit new in terms of not only the socket, but the actual type of VRM style that normally is on a board. Um, because of the actual north bridge no longer existing and now being directly inside the CPU, our VRM has now become much more compact. So with it being much more compact, we really want to have an optimal cooling solution to help ensure long-term reliability, especially as you start to overclock the platform. So with that, we're using the most efficient mechanism that's on the market in terms of a digital PWM, um, which is part of our digital power control initiative. With this digital mechanism, it allows us to have a lot of control over the actual VRM and how it's gonna actually be operating in terms of its actual idle states, load states, and maximum load state. So these are all configurable parameters that you can go into the actual UEFI or within AI Suite 2 and adjust on the fly. Now, we can take a look here as we actually see the board that we have our actual chokes underneath here. Those are our tough chokes. If we take a look here, we can't see them, but underneath this actual portion right here, the primary VRM heatsink, we actually have our MOSFETs, okay? And um, on our MOSFETs, we're actually utilizing a new type of MOSFET package. This MOSFET package is called a dual end MOSFET package. This integrate, integrates what's called the high side and the low side MOSFET package, which gives us overall better efficiency, lower temperature due to the restricted spacing, but we still maintain an independent driver to go ahead and ensure the best performance. Now, if you were looking at the VRM heatsink, you could see that we had a heat pipe, a centered heat pipe, running from the actual underside of this heatsink that goes into this new portion here. This is actually our thermal armor block. Now our thermal armor block actually has a heat sink that is underneath here that this centered heat pipe directly goes into. Now this is critical because when we go ahead and introduce this fan that comes included with the saber tooth, we can go ahead and unscrew these two screws, lift this portion up, and now go ahead and put in this actually VRM uh, 
fan to go ahead and get more optimal cooling. And this is going to be critical, especially when you're taking the CPU to those higher thresholds, 4.5, 4.6 gigahertz, and starting to put it under heavy load, you're going to want to really ensure optimal VRM cooling to help keep the long-term reliability of the actual platform. And that really dovetails into the other thermal armor implementation, which is here on the PCH. So for the PCH as well, we actually have a heat sink directly underneath here, where this fan actually flows down and fires downward to go ahead and give us optimal cooling. And this is critical, especially as you get these higher performance GPUs, whether in one single GPU or two GPUs, you might have more ambient hot air that's sitting in this area of the board. And we're trying to keep this area cool because we've got a lot of key connections that we want to help ensure better reliability for. One of them, of course, is our actual SATA controller. We want to minimize heat buildup for this that can sometimes cause data integrity check issues. Or possibly we also have the USB 3 header uh, here and we actually have the USB 3 IC here as well. So all of these items, ideally for long-term operation, definitely doesn't hurt to try to keep them overall cooler and that's what we're looking to try to do with the thermal armor implementation. So now that we've covered a lot of the items here on the actual front end of the board, let's go ahead and actually jump over to the back item. Now taking a look at the back I.O. here, you can see part of that actual heat sink that I was referring to. Now let's go ahead and jump over and actually take a look and see what we have here. So on the top, we've got two USB 3 ports and then we have a combo PS2 port. The USB 3 ports on all of this board, whether these two here or these two here or the front header, all feature ASUS's USB 3 boost technology. This essentially allows you to receive faster performance for any standard USB 2 or USB 3 device by utilizing our exclusive turbo mode, which you can enable via AASP 2, or if you're utilizing a UASP USB 3 device, you get significantly faster performance. And that feature can also once again be enabled with an ASP 2. So moving over to the rest of the I.O. here, we have a SATA 6G connection uh, that's eSATA based. This is powered eSATA SATA 6G. We then have a 1394 FireWire connection and then we have two standard USB 2 ports. Here we have a Toslink optical out. Then here we have a standard eSATA connection. Now here's something special. We have a BIOS button, and then we also have a white USB 2 port. This button is pretty special. What this allows us to do is, is that when we're first setting up the system, if we want to easily flash the actual UEFI, or what's referred to in the legacy term as the BIOS, no CPU, no memory, no graphics card is required. All you'd have to do is just take your flash drive, plug it in here, hold this button down, and once you hold this button down for about three seconds, this light will start to blink, and this will automatically low-level update the actual UEFI to the build that you have put onto the actual flash drive. This also can be used as a recovery tool in the event that maybe you're too aggressive with overclocking and the board were to fail, uh, in terms of the EP-ROM, you could go ahead and attempt to go ahead and recover it using this same exclusive USB BIOS flashback. So moving along here, when not in the USB BIOS flashback mode, of course this serves as a standard USB 2 port, and then we've got four more USB 2 ports. Moving to the bottom here, we've got an additional two USB 3 ports that feature the USB 3 boost technology. And then we have one Intel native gigabit Ethernet controller. This is a big plus for us because one, we save on a PCIe lane because it's native to the chipset. In addition to that, we get the better performance compatibility as well as the advanced driver stack functionality that's offered for Intel network controllers. And lastly here, we have our actual uh, 7.1 audio connection, which actually ties in to the actual audio codec that we have on the board, a Realtek 892, which also now features a new DTS codec package that supports DTS Connect for real-time encoding of two-channel content into multi-channel content. So that overall gives you a little bit of an overview as well as the unboxing our Sabertooth x series motherboard. If you're looking for more information relative to either overclocking, more of the features covered in more detail, definitely hit us up, leave us some comments here on the YouTube page or head over to ASUS ROG uh, forums and we'll have a whole additional slew of details there. Thanks.